connected to the meeting, but your camera is off. So I don't feel like it's an official meeting oh. until you are present with your camera on. So I can, I can there see. We go. Excellent. All right, well, uh, welcome everybody uh, to this meeting of Carpenteria Bird Watchers for Thursday, May 14th, I think. Uh, and uh, thank you to all of you for putting up with a, a sort of less prepared meeting. Uh, I chose the topic for this meeting to be our favorite bird books so we could all share about our favorite bird books. And, and partly that was because I've been hoping to get more participation going. I, I find, at least for me, that's the, the most fun part of these meetings. Um, and the other reason is that, you know, uh, preparing a, a talk with slides about a group of birds is, is fun, but it's also time consuming. So I was looking to, to buy myself a week off uh, where my only preparation is reading some of my favorite bird books, which I would be doing anyway. So uh, that's what I did this week. Um, for next week, just as a preview, I'm thinking of doing uh, a meeting on swallows because that's a group that's, that's kind of small and manageable and we haven't talked about before and they're around now. So it'd be a good time to brush up on our swallows. I just or, wanted to say, yeah. I, I've been having so many cliff swallows. There'll be just like hundreds swooping around in the sky and just eating all the bugs throughout yeah. the day. So are they nesting under the eaves of a, a building where you are? Are they, they building no, those nests? They, they like nest right up in a corner. And yeah. I've, I already see two just on our house. They always just like, like oh, there's so many. Oh, and down on our little spot, there's just like the whole like under part is just like filled. It, you can't even see the little spot right there. Awesome. Well, uh, we will have much more fun uh, swallow talk a week from now. Uh, but for today, it's going to be our favorite bird books. So uh, format wise, I you know haven't really worked this out in detail. I just thought we would go around and take turns you know, sharing about our favorite bird books. Um, if you have one you'd like to share about, I'd say use the, the hand raise feature in Zoom or uh, mention it in the, the, the chat, the, the Zoom chat, or just unmute and just say, I have one and, and we can go with that. Brody, I see you have your, your hand raised in reality, not even in the Zoom interface. So if you wanna I, go and talk about a bird book, that would be great. Yeah, so my favorite is the, Birds, um, I'll, I'll just flip it around. My favorite is the birds, the world in your hands. Wow, that is one I don't know. This is, you've, right away, you've expanded my horizons. I, I was not expecting to see a lot of books I, I hadn't seen before because I, I have a thing about collecting bird books. But tell us about this book, Brody. Where, you know, how did you um, get it and what is it all about? Um, so this is actually the first bird book that I got, and that's how I got into birds. I, and then it comes in like a little pack. There's two other things, so you can have a little scrap drawing thing. I have drawn oh, yeah. paper. And then it also comes with a map of North American birds. Oh, so it's sort of a handy, you know, portable yeah. field guide. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just, um, yeah, so that's how I got into them, and on every bird it has about like, it has um, about a paragraph or two, and then it shows right down over here, like where it lives, its terrain, how many eggs it'll lay, endangered, and it'll also maybe show the color variants or other stuff about them. And so I can see that these are these are world birds, right? Does this cover the, the whole yes. world? Yes, yeah, this covers the whole world. So you've got a lot of birds to choose from there, right? Like famously more than 10,000 species potentially, so. Oh yeah, and That's I think great. it actually says that on it. Um, 700 species. Okay, so I mean, yeah, they're not gonna show 10,000 in a book that you could no. actually carry. No, I have a really big one that, it, my grandfather gave me and it's really big it has it's about like three inches thick yeah cool so the 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 fold out the card that i can see there that came, comes with it is that oh, world oh. birds also or is that more local this right here yeah these are more local birds i ah. um the 
I can't. North American birds, yes. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Cool. Okay, well, uh, thank you for sharing that, Brody. Um, Thanks. Do we have uh, someone else? I mean, and we'll come back to you. It sounds like you may have other stuff you could share as well, but I'm, I'm trying to rotate around. Uh, does someone else have a, a book they'd be interested in sharing? I'm, uh, yeah. I see Mary Jo, you have your hand, uh, you have your hand up. Do you want to go, Mary Jo? Uh, you're muted. Let's see. I can unmute you. There, I have unmuted you, so. Ah. The Genius of Birds. Ackerman. Have you read any of her, John? I don't think I've read that one. I've, um, I've heard her, I heard her interview just recently uh, on a podcast. Ah, and she yeah. just came out with a new one after this one. This one is 2016. And she just put out another book called uh, The Bird Way. She's a science writer, but she's also, you know, obviously an ornithologist enthusiast. And it has some wonderful chapters in it. Uh, things like uh, avian brain, the avian brain, and how much the weight, their brain for their size is big, you know, for their weight, their body weight, and lots of neurons, you know, very intricate neurons, which is amazing. Uh, then there's, a, a, there's also a, a chapter on uh, technical wizardry. And of course, we see the corvids, you know, creating tools and that sort of thing. And then <clears throat> social savvy is one of her uh, chapters, vocal vir virtuosity, aesthetic aptitude. She goes into uh, a story about an Australian bird that creates uh, a performance um, stage for itself, the, ma the male in the, in the wooing phase. Uh, it's just fascinating. So she's very interesting, very informative and entertaining and, and good with language. Wonderful book. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I heard her interviewed on the uh, American Birding Association podcast just in the last few weeks, and she was talking about the new the new book, The Bird Way, and she and yeah. she talked about these Australian species and just how interesting they were. And yeah, yeah. yeah so that, that sounded well, really all neat. The things you've addressed too, which is wonderful. You know, so many things you've talked about. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a fascinating <laughs> topic, and there's there's certain plenty of room for everyone to talk about. It. I'd, I'd love to learn more. I saw that. So it has a scrub jay on the cover of that book. Do you remember? Does she talk specifically about scrub jays in the book? Uh, you know, I haven't read all the way through it. It's it's got a lot going on. Uh, yes, she does talk about them. Yeah. I have several pets that come and demand food from me at my front porch. Is that um, a the the peanuts? Do you do the peanut feeding for the scrub jays? Yeah, or they eat some of the kitty kibble too, which I oh. think is safe because it's. Uh, you know, a mix of things that are hopefully safe because it, they keep coming back, several of them, calling me demanding, which I'm sure other people have experienced. It's fun. Yeah, yeah that, is, that is great fun. All right, well, well, thank you very much for sharing that. Um, is there anybody else uh, ready to go with a, a, another book? Uh, Jenny, I see Jenny waiting. Yes, Jenny, tell us about-, about um, Just to follow up, that is a great book that she mentioned. I loved it. Um, and speaking of scrub jays, Outside of my house, we've got a nest. My cats can't go outside anymore because they are all over them. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, one of the adult scrub jays actually flew into the house to try to get one of our cats. Oh, wow. Yeah, and the cats are just so scared. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> well, I mean, as a cat owner, I sympathize with the cat, but as a bird lover, I'm, I'm rooting for the scrub jays in that scenario. That Absolutely. Um, <laughs> The book I was going to talk about is um, The Introduction to the California Condor. I think I picked this up at the Museum of Natural History. Um, I was a volunteer for many years with the Condor Recovery Project, and it's a fascinating volunteer program, and it just made me want to learn more about this specific species and the trials and tribulations that it's gone through with um, having all of this adaptive management situations in the 80s, every single bird was captured and put into captive breeding. At one time, there were only 22 birds left on the planet. And it wasn't easy to capture them all. Um, this book talks about this entire program. Um, and I think 
there was one bird that they couldn't capture and that bird spent almost a year flying around California by itself as the only wild bird on the planet. Um, it's fascinating and um, the update from Fish and Wildlife Service is that they no, no longer need the nest guarding program because it's been a very slow but successful program and they're at a point where they're backing off a little bit because their distribution has widened and they're having better um, natural breeding success in the wild. That's great. So yeah, so these days we have, we have the population like in Northern Ventura County, right? Or in Kern County, kind of up there. It's part of the Hopper Mountain population. So the, the Southern California population. Uh -huh. And then and we've got Big Sur. And they and do kind of mix a little. Mm -hmm. and, and then they fly through Santa Barbara County on their way to and from so you know yeah yeah and then we've got um, Arizona Utah and Baja so there's the Grand Canyon population right? but there's a Baja population as well or is that part of the Grand Canyon group do they fly down there or no there's the one in Mexico is totally separate and it's managed um, kind of like how the Fish and Wildlife Service manages our two populations that we have in California with yeah. captive breeding and um, a, a easy release with, with supplemental feeding and things like that. Yeah, that's really neat. I just recently, you know, went to, to Hudson Ranch Road to, to see some of the, the condors there. And I haven't had a close view of one yet. I've been there a couple of times, but each time I went there, I had views of them, you know, in the distance flying. And it's, it's an amazing thing to see. They do open houses at both of the refuges. And it's an amazing experience to actually get on there. You can get very up close with some of the flight pens where you would get a close view. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. And so that that book, that looks like it's in the, um, there's like a series and I have several, but I don't have that one. What's the, the like the series of books that's part of? I sort of recognize the format. University of California Press. Yeah, yeah. So I've got, there's a bunch of those that I have on the bookshelf that I didn't pick to, to share today. But, um, but I think I will add that one because that does sound really fascinating. You I'd can like borrow to. mine if you ever want to. Yes, but see, then I want to have it. So, okay. you know, there's, there's the having thing too. Um, but thank you. Thank you very much. And I may take you up on that. Okay. Uh, do we have uh, someone else who'd like to go? I'd be happy to, to jump in and share one of mine if, if folks are shy. So, all right, I'll go ahead. Um, so I wanted to share, and I'm kind of taking this one, even though I know that, that Tom has this, maybe some of the rest of you have this as well. So this is... Uh, the new book from David Sibley, uh, what it's like to be a bird. And, um, you know, most of you in this group know that I'm a big fan of, of Sibley's field guide and uh, have been a fan of his generally for a long time. So I was very excited about this book. And uh, I just think it's, it's a great book. It's, it's larger format, you know, it's definitely not a field guide. Um, but in terms of a book, you can sit and look at, um, and just page through it's, it's really wonderful. He, um, it's kind of different too. It's different in terms of its approach. And he talks about in the introduction how it came about. Uh, so originally he was thinking about his next book and he was thinking he would do a, a, a book oriented towards younger readers. So it's gonna be larger format with, with bigger, larger illustrations. Um, and as he was working on it, he was going to supplement the content with these little sidebars or little discussions of sort of late, latest scientific research or recent interesting questions in bird science that he he learned about. And he found that as he worked on it, that that part was much more interesting than the, the sort of general content that the book was originally designed to have. So eventually he junked that first part and he actually decided just to make it more of a general interest book, not oriented towards children per se, but he kept the large format because he really liked being able to make the bigger illustrations. You know, like a lot of field guide uh, artists, he, he chafes under the size restrictions that you face. If you're making art for a field guide, you have to cram in so much in such a small space. Um, here, you know, I've neglected to switch to speaker view. So let me do this so you can actually see the book uh, larger, hopefully. Um, but uh, so what he does is in the book is it's got basically sections where he goes through in taxonomic order. And here you can see this is the, the brown pelican he's talking about. And he has a, a large illustration on the left page that is roughly life-sized, which I thought was kind of cool. It's it's sort of a, it harkens back to the Birds of America, the famous Audubon uh, work, you know, that um, one of the selling points of Audubon's Birds of America was that it was really large format and it illustrated birds in, in their life size. 
So he does something like that, basically, where you've got these life-sized illustrations. And then on the facing pages, he has other discussions of, of this recent research and just lots of different topics. And it's, um, I just, I just really, really like it. I, I, in a way, I think I like it better thinking about how much I would have loved this when I was a younger birder. And I was first, you know, one of the first books I pulled off the shelves that my parents had. You know, I have, you know, my parents had their, I had my books as a kid, these kid books, but then I also had the, the bookcase of my parents' book and I would go pull stuff off there. And the, the field guides, you know, the birding field guides or nature field guides were, were the things that I really spent a lot of time with. And if this book had been on those shelves, I, I'm sure I would have just spent hours and hours just going through it. Um, so I really recommend it. It's a little pricey. Um, you know, the large format means it's more expensive. Um, I confess, I didn't even look at the price when I bought it. So I don't even know how much it is. I know it's a fair amount. Uh, but I, I certainly encourage you, if you're looking for a bird gift or you want to make a gift to yourself, this would be a really nice one. Okay, so uh, who else do we have who can who can share share a favorite bird book? Andrea, I see your hand is up. Can you share something, Andrea? Well, she was showing the um, the scrub jay. Yeah. And so I went to the other room and got scrub jay cafe. <laughs> this was written by a local uh, person. She's um, let's see, where's her name? Leanne Roth. Yes, she's our local uh, naturalist over at the state park. And it's a really fun book and my grandkids like it. Would you be willing so to kind of flip through there all, and show us? Yeah, can you show us some of the in insides? Mind. Yeah. There's one page. So it's is it a coloring book or is it it's not really it's, it's, like a roly poly in your guacamole? It's in that that vein. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just a fun book. Yeah, no, I you know, my kids have sort of aged out of that that kind of book, but with any luck, I'll have I'll have grandkids soon that I could sit down with a book like that and don't don't push them along. I just <laughs> let them wait for their time to come. Yeah, yeah. Well, here here's one in backwards. I don't know how to do this frontwards. Um, I just picked this up. It's Birds of the South, 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 Southeastern Arizona. My sister lives in Arizona, and we and I saw this at the used bookstore. And it's kind of a nice book. It shows the birds and it has one of those uh, things like you always show us. And like the dates when you can see them during the yeah. year. Yeah. And so it was it was nice. So if you happen to be going to southeastern Arizona, you might like that. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let, let's keep going. Uh, someone else I'm sure has a favorite bird book. I see, is that a hand up from Tom? There's some sort of little symbol by your entry. Is that a, are you ready to go with a bird book, Tom? Yeah, I, I have a few books because I'm, I'm sending some books. I'm doing this for a couple of other people. Excellent. The one I started to read recently that I really has been enjoying a lot. I don't know if everyone can see it. It's why birds, why birds do that? Is that coming through? Yeah, no, you see it quite well. Yeah, Why Birds Do That. And, and that's really a fun book. And it also has great illustrations and photographs. And uh, it's by Michael Furtman. And uh, anyway, so that's been a fun book. My most favorite book that I'm, that I, uh, it's way too big. It's uh, How to Draw and Paint a Book. And I don't practice enough, but this is my most favorite book. It was given by a friend, uh, Marion Allen. And um, so uh, I like this one a lot, but uh, Melissa Doyle wanted me to say the book of ducks. She has been wanting me to share some of these photographs from the book of ducks and great illustrations. So I think speaking of Grandchildren, this is probably a good book for them <laughs> or anyone at all. I think it's a fantastic book. Uh, but she wanted me to, there's a nice widgeon. Yeah, yeah, which we would call a Eurasian widgeon. So I'm guessing this is a, like a European, a Eurocentric. This is like, looks like English, English yeah, it birds. Does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, um, the Gargany, yeah. yeah, which we famously had one in Santa Barbara County, but it was quite exceptional here a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so th that's from Melissa Doyle, and, and these are great photographs. I love them. And the last thing I have from Nancy Bebe is 
the life list, a life list, a woman's quest for the world's most amazing birds. This woman also got cancer and kind of upped her game a bit to try to get more birds and traveled all over the world. And she loved this book. She thought she wanted me to share it with everyone. So. Yeah, I read about that book, but I have not actually read it. So that's a good recommendation. Yeah, a life list by Olivia Gentile. Okay. So, and, oh, I can do one more. Laurel, Laurel right now, sorry everyone. Laurel loves this class, but is look, doing a class on wolves right now. Okay, we have competition <laughs> today. It's the last of the curlews by Fred Botsworth, and it was written in the 1950s. And she thinks it's one of the best bird books she's ever read, and Laurel buys a lot of bird books. She's like John, she has a ton of books. <laughs> so the last of the curlews, so. Yeah, I will look for that one too. And as, a, as an aside, I will put links in the description for the YouTube live stream to you know, all these sites of all the books we've talked about. There's a few links there now, just because I knew I was gonna talk about some, but um, I'll go back and, and you know, dig out the links for all of these. So, I mean, you can obviously do that as well yourself, but it'll save some time if someone's watching this in the future, you can you know, click on all the links there and, and go directly to all of these books. Okay, uh, well, we're, we're rolling right along. Uh, anyone else want to share a book? Brody, should we do round two? Are you ready to share something else? Yeah, so I was just gonna show the one that my grandfather gave me. So, birds. Can you, can you pull back a little bit and give us a, oh, there we go, so birds of the world. In kind of a large format. And yeah. it's it's quite substantial. Can you flip through there a little bit? Yeah. So um here's a brown pelican. The dodo and I have a question for Brody, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I mean so, he can answer Brody. himself, obviously. It's very impressive how much you know about birds already. And my question for you is, do you have family members that are also bird fanatics or how did you get interested in birds? I don't have any family um, members that are bird fanatics, but except my grandfather who encouraged me in it and really helped me through it. And the first bird book that I showed that's what really started me and got me into it and then I just started studying them and yeah that's so great I wish I had started at a younger age but it's it's very impressive good for you Thanks. yeah thank you peacocks yeah and I just wanted to show a few of my pictures that I had Giant hummingbird, pileated, sword build, tropic bird, cattle, um, night heron. Yeah. And Brody, are those your? Those are your drawings. Yes, those are my drawings. I, yeah. um, I drew them out of the book, but I drew them out of my book, but I drew them. Yes. That's wonderful. Yeah, you know, I know um, David Sibley, you know, my my idol in, in bird book terms, has talked a lot about the benefits of drawing birds and he, he recommends it. He's like, you know, we should all be drawing, drawing birds because it'll force you to, I mean, for all, aside from all the other benefits of, of being creative and artistic is it, it will teach you about the bird, like to, to actually draw it, you have to really understand what it is that you're seeing. And if you can translate it onto the page, it's, it's very educational, it's very informative. And I noticed that Arthur Singer was the, the illustrator of that, that book you just showed us. And he's a, a famous bird illustrator. And I know just looking at those illustrations that those are, those are really excellent illustrations he's done. And you're well on your way to making excellent illustrations too. As you're going through, I, I looked at him and said, oh yeah, that's a cattle egret. I recognized it right away. So that's great. That is Brody, those are fantastic. They were really incredible, charming. Good, good job. Yeah, I try to replicate them as much as I can. And 
Yeah, that's great. Yeah, some of them are harder than others. And the one that I did best at was the first one that I showed you, which was the Gordian Finch. Very cool. And I would imagine that, you know, those ones that you've spent that time and struggled to try and get them down just right, that really helps those stick in your mind. And then you, you know, you yeah. recognize if you saw that bird in the wild, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I know that bird. I, I drew it. You know, you, you really have to understand it. I didn't really see, I didn't really see them in the wild, but I, um, but I just like, I looked in the book and I found one of the pictures that I liked and I yeah. drew it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Uh, okay. We got, uh, anyone else want to go either first time or second time? So, uh, you're on screen as, as Bexter. Uh, but you're muted. If you're talking to us, uh, can you unmute or is it okay if I unmute you? That's my grandpa. Oh, oh yeah. Is all right if I, you can give me uh, permission to unmute him and I'll unmute yes. him. There you go. He did it himself. Great. Yeah, I, I, I find for California, there's really, as far as in depth, the Birds of California by Leon Dawson. He's the man that started the Santa Barbara Natural History Museum. It comes in four volumes and it's really in depth on all the birds that occur in California. He has lots of pictures, color pictures, a few color pictures, uh, the, uh, the, the bluebird, the mountain bluebird. Yep. And it's really, it's, it's, um, it was, it's, was done in 23 and he, he they're really interesting. It's a, if, if you want in depth of birds in California, that's, that's the books to get, those are the books to get. Yeah, that might be, might be tough to obtain that book if you don't have it on the shelf already. Is that, I assume that's, that's it's very a, much it, out of print. Yeah, it's over, it's all over 100 years, um, 97 years old. So it's, it's still, he did four editions of it. So you can still get it fairly recently. Yeah, for some reason, I'm not able to unmute you, Jim. So, uh, and I can see the book you're trying to show. It's a book you lent me and it's a wonderful book. Um, the Seabirds Cry. I could narrate about it myself. Or can you I hear me now? Ah, uh, yes, there we go. Okay, great. Um, yes, the seabirds cry. And I think that the easiest way to explain this to you is just with both of these, I'm just going to read the synopsis on the back of the book to let you see if it interests you. Um, the, seabirds, the seabirds cry by Adam Nicholson, the lives and loves of the planet's great ocean voyagers. And here's the synopsis on the back. As the only creatures at home on land, at sea, and in the air, seabirds have evolved to thrive in the most demanding environment on earth. The seabird's cry travels ocean paths, fusing traditional knowledge with astonishing facts science has recently learned about these creatures, the way their bodies actually work, their dazzling navigational skills, their ability to smell their way to fish or to home, and to understand the discipline of the winds upon which they depend. This book is a peon to the beauty of life on the wing, but even as we are coming to understand the seabirds, a global tragedy is unfolding. Their numbers are in free fall, dropping by nearly 70% in the last 60 years, a billion fewer than in 1950. Extinction, extinction stalks the ocean, and there is a danger that the 100 million old cries of a seabird colony rolling around the bays and headlands of high, high latitudes will this century become a memory. Um, this is a great book because it's, it's got science mixed with literature, history, uh, storytelling. What he, he did was take, as you know, John, took about 10 ocean going birds, the ox, the albatross, various things, and went into depth about natural selection, evolution, global warming, very many things. It's a, this is a great read. Um, yeah. I I will, if I can just jump in and reinforce that. You, you yeah. loaned me that book uh, and I was yeah. really excited to be reading it. it I got kind of busy and I, I, I bogged down and didn't get as far as I wanted. I read the account of the Fulmar and it was right. wonderful. You know, it was very informative, as you say, on a scientific level, lots of things I didn't really understand that I'd learned about this bird. Yeah. Um, but also the language was at times just almost poetic, you know, very uh, evocative descriptions. And I was enjoying it a lot. I started feeling guilty because we had exchanged books and you'd return <laughs> yours to me. And I was like, oh, I got to give this book back. So I gave it back. And now I find myself wishing, you know, I wish I could, I could go back and read more of it. So maybe once I'll, this whole I'll current isolation ends, I can. We were originally uh, uh, given this book by a friend of my wife, Penny, who uh, was so inspired by reading it that she and her husband traveled to the Shetland Islands to go birding just because of this reading. And then just real quickly, one other book that was a gift to us from Tom and Laurel. 
The Sun is a Compass is a wonderful read. It's, it's ornithology. I'll read, I'll read the synopsis briefly this, and see if I'll read this, this quickly. When ornithologist Carolyn Van Hemmert became disenchanted with research, she knew she needed to leave the laboratory behind. Together with her husband, she set off on a 4,000 mile wilderness odyssey from the Pacific rainforest to the Arctic Ocean. Traveling, traveling by rowboat, ski, foot, raft, and canoe, the couple faced fierce spring storms, avalanches, and a predatory bear, while also discovering the moments of incredible joy and the bond that results from such partnership. Ben Hemmert you, provides a uniquely intimate perspective on science, adventure, and the natural world as she examines the limits of her own endurance and the tenuousness of life among birds and other animals whose daily survival is nothing short of miraculous. Shared through the lens of a biologist and modern day explorer, the sun is a compass offers a stirring testament to human resilience and the reawakening of wonder in this remarkable journey to the Arctic's edge. And I, I think what I like about this as much as the birding, which is part of it, is the last sentence, the wonder that we all feel searching the natural world and appreciating the natural world. And this comes through in this book very much. So anyway, yeah. the sun is a compass. Just just very recently printed. And, and again, who is the author? Uh, Carolyn Van Hemmert. She grew up in Alaska, uh, went on to become an ornithologist, kind of uh, searching for a while, and then worked on a PhD in, ornith in uh, ornithology, dropped the lab for a while, got out into the wilderness, which she yearned for. and. Uh, but uh, that's kind of the synopsis of that book. Excellent. So, yeah. 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 You know, and it brought home to me as you were going through over, over those two books and just thinking about it. You know, birds are just an inherently fascinating thing, you know, and, right. and you find, you know, other people feel the same way. And then you find people, you know, taking their, their lives of fascination with birds and putting it out there and sharing it in the form of a book. There's just some amazing books out there, amazing bird books. Yeah, it's really inspiring. Yeah, both of them. Okay, uh, I, 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 you know, don't want to stop people. Uh, we we have time for a few more. If anyone else would like to to share one, uh, Linda Rose. Just, I see you have your hand up. If, can we do her first and then you, Tom? Yeah. Who's okay. first? Uh, you, Linda. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the one that Tom, the book that Tom uh, brought up about Phoebe Snetzinger, the Life List. Um, but she was fascinating and I think there's some other books about her as well but um, a fun one that I read about not so much about birds but about birders was The Big Year um, it, it came out I don't know a few years ago I don't have it anymore um, got rid of it when we downsized but it was a fun book about these I don't know if, if um, I think they're still doing this big year thing I don't know about right now, but um, these people are just obsessed <laughs> and they go into debt and everything to fly all over the, the country and try and come up with their big year, get the most um, birds listed that they can. And, and then it was made into a movie too with Steve Martin. I don't know if you remember that, um, but it, it was fun if you ever want to do something lighter. Yeah, if I could actually jump in. So I'm going to jump my place in line because uh, I was going to talk about The Big Year as my other book. So I can go ahead now and, and do it with that great oh. intro. So um, this is one of those books where, you know, the book comes out and then they make a movie of it and they resell the book with the, the actors from the movie on the cover. And if you're a fan of the book from before the movie, you feel a little bit scandalized, like, no, 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 it was a book before the movie. It's not just about the movie. Uh, so but that's, this is the copy of the book that I have. So it, it shows, you know, uh, Steve Martin and Owen Wilson and, and Jack Black on the cover because they play the, the three uh, big year birders. Um, but yeah, I, um, I had heard of the book, but I hadn't read it. And then I saw the movie. So the, the account that the book, the, the events that the book is talking about were, took place in, in 1998. It was the big year competition between these three birders, among others, in 1998. And then the book itself came out in 2004, and then the movie came out in 2011. So um, I went and saw the movie, and you know, 
it's a good movie. I, I wish, I, I felt like I wanted it to be a better movie or there was like a version of the movie that I would have loved that probably would not as many people would have gone to see that would have, you know, been uh, maybe a little more true and not have a little bit of the stretching of things to, to make it a better story for the general audience. Um, but anyway, uh, but I finally got back to reading the book. So I've been reading it lately, in fact. And um, I like it a lot. It's a really great book. Um, you know, it's, it's not, fictionalized, except in the sense, like the movie is sort of fictionalized, you know, which is fine. Uh, but the book is, is more of a nonfiction account. It's a little bit of that, uh, that journalistic approach where the journalist will describe scenes that the journalist was not actually there for, and they're quoting people in these moments. And, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, I don't wanna say fictionalizing, but it's, it's dramatizing it in a way, but it's based on, you know, actual interviews with the people involved. So hopefully it's, it's true to life. Um, and it's, it's a really good story. And as, as Linda was saying, you know, they, these three birders travel all over the country and, uh, you know, I, I've been a little bit obsessed with sort of doing big years the last few years within the boundaries of Santa Barbara County, which is a very different scale, you know, much, much smaller scale than what, what, what these folks do and, and what people continue to do. Um, but I did, you know, recognize some of my own, uh, uh, attitudes and behaviors in, in, as it plays out on a much larger scale than what those folks did. So yeah, I liked it a lot and, and thank you for, for bringing it up. And that was before eBird. So they really had a tough time. Yeah. And in fact, that's a big part of what they were doing in 1998. It was, was how did you get the information? You know, how did you, like, did you cult, you, they would cultivate networks of, of people who would phone them in the middle of the night, like, oh, we got a such and such. And they'd be on a plane the next day to go try and see it. Yeah. yeah, Ebert has really transformed that. And, you know, I was reading some articles just in the last week about the, the big year birders who had, you know, planned and focused on 2020 as the year they were going to do a big year. And, you know, it's, it's kind of sad in a way that, you know, those plans have, have run into the same thing that everyone else has run into where they're, they're not doing that kind of travel now. It's not really an option anymore. So in this, this article I was reading, they're all, you know, uh, they're all taking pains to say, yes, we realize this is a very small, you know, thing to complain about and people are facing much greater uh, hardships and, and suffering and, you know, the death toll is, is uh, heartbreaking. And me not being able to do my, my birding is maybe not such a big deal, but, you know, to those people who focused on it, it is, you know, kind of a, another component of what's going on that's kind of sad. And, you know, hopefully as we move on and we, we ease these restrictions, the the, the chase can resume, the, the people willing to, you know, go to extraordinary lengths just to try and see a bird. Uh, there can be more of that again, because it's been kind of, kind of hard to do that in, in the last few months. And, you know, we'll, we'll get there, but it, it may take time. And in the meantime, we've got birds we can see in our yards, which is great. I was doing that before the meeting today. I was out there working on my yard list. I think I had a new yard list bird. I saw uh, brown pelicans flying by down near the coast from my yard and my yard is not that close to the beach, but you know, eBird rules say, if you can see it from the spot you're birding, you can record it. So uh -huh. new, new yard bird. Okay, so uh, anybody else wanna go? We're, we're closing in on our 45 minutes uh, that I had targeted for the meeting. Oh, I see Tom has a book up. So Tom, yeah, you're- I'm just gonna you know, back Jim up on, and you up on the Seabird Cry by Adam Nicholson. That, uh, that was Laurel's, Another one of Lowell's best books. So I just want to let everyone know that. This, the Seabird's Cry, what Jim was talking about. So, okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. And I, you know, I, I, I kick myself all the time that I let that one get away, that I didn't, I didn't fully, you know, uh, suck all the great, great writing out of it that I could have. And, and I'm looking forward to, to getting back to it and doing that. Uh, okay. Uh, anyone else? Last chance? <laughs> Yeah, I see. Okay, so I hear somebody and I see Brody waving his hand. So let's do Brody first and then whoever else can go as well. It was me who was saying something. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say because someone else asked if any, uh, if other people in my family um, did um, do birding, but no one else did. But I just wanted to say what they were, which were mostly um, like they did flowers on my mom's side. And um, hunting mostly on the dams and farming. Yeah, I yeah. share that because I just started thinking about it. 
Yeah, and it's true. There's a lot of overlap there, you know, and I think fishing too is kind of the same thing, you know, uh, yeah. fishermen, fisher people, uh, hunters, outdoorsy people in general, um, and bird watchers, you know, I think we all share a lot of the same motivations and, you know, we're yeah. out there. It's an excuse in a way just to be out there. You know, I think for most people I know, at least who engage in those kinds of things, it isn't like, so for hunters, it's not that they necessarily just want to go out there and, and, you know, shoot yeah. ducks or you know, they, they want to be out there at dawn and see the, the birds flying in. And it's, it's, you know, a cool yeah, experience. My dad said we're, um, they would mostly shoot mammals and not um, birds as much. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, that, that's great. And you know, I was actually, I thought it was really neat that your grandfather was was a big factor in, in sort of sparking your own interest in birds or helping along with the, the yeah. books he gave you. My first, the person who got me going with birds was my grandmother, my, uh, my father's mother, who, you know, pointed out a mockingbird in our yard one day and, and I was hooked. And I also, I came to realize afterwards that the books I was pulling off my, my parents' bookshelf, those are my grandmother's bird books is what I was actually <laughs> reading that they had somehow inherited even because my parents weren't birding themselves, but they still had yeah. those books around. Yeah, and, but uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and mostly all of those are all connected because um, some birds do hunt mammals and hummingbirds um, drink nectar, which flowers produce. And most birds have eat plants uh, parts too. Yeah, so all those interests of your family, you're saying they're all kind of tied together. Yeah, that's neat. Okay, well, um, I'm going to, you know, uh, give folks one last chance. If you've been holding back and you, you have something you just want to share, a book you haven't talked about that we haven't talked about. I mean, there's thousands of them out there. There's a lot of really great books, and we really just scratched the surface. Jenny, yeah, you're waving. This was a good one. It's on my list of things to read. It's been a long time since I read it, but it's called Kingbird Highway. Um, it's a novel about a, a, a man and his experiences bird watching over a year, kind of hitchhiking around the country. And it's very well written and it's a lovely story. And once I reread it, I'll give you a better idea of what's what I like. It's yeah. Fun. If I can, if I can endorse that, uh, I recently read *Kingbird Highway*. It's by Ken Kaufman, uh, and it, you know, it's really interesting because he's sort of talking about the beginning of what turned into this this big year kind of thing, this this sort of organized birding effort. He was one of the very early folks doing that, you know, back I want to say in the early 1970s when he was talking about, and it had just become a thing, like that, you know, you could get this information and you could actually travel around. And a few people had done it, uh, talks about this in the, the beginning of the big year, which again, I'm just reading now. So it, it sort of recounts that history. But a few people had started to do it. And um, Roger Torrey Peterson had famously done it a few years earlier. And people started duplicating that. And, uh, you know, what Ken Kaufman showed was like, well, he was a teenager. He didn't have any money, but he also didn't, you know, want to miss his chance to do this. So he just went out and hitchhiked and he just covered the whole country, you know, famously eating cat food. You know, that was like, because he would he would work for like a week and get a, you know, a, a little bit of money and it was enough to take him along to some other birding location. Um, and he, you know, he continues to be a, a, a great advocate for birding these days. He wrote Ken Kaufman's Field Guide to Advanced Birding that I, I was hyping last week. Um, so, uh, okay. Uh, well, I keep saying this, but, um, I will really give just one last chance now to anybody who wants to, to mention a bird book. Brody, I see your hand up. Give us one more, Brody. It wasn't about a bird book, but I was just wondering, in eBird, do you have to like sign in to put down birds, like list birds? So you need to have an account if you're going to submit your own lists. Uh, okay, yeah. You can actually submit lists as an anonymous Birder. You don't have to have your own personal information associated with the list in a way that's visible to anyone else in the world. Um, the folks at eBirds have tried very hard to make the tool as useful as it can be for anybody, you know, regardless of how you feel about sharing your information publicly. You can use eBird and, and 
put your information in there and use all the tools to sort of sift through it and, and see your records of what you've seen and sort it different ways. It's, it's very useful uh, okay. without making it really public or you can share it publicly. You can go anywhere in between. So and yeah. Exactly. And how do you do that? How do you? Uh, well, go to ebird.org. Um, you know, I would be happy to, to devote a future class to that. That would be maybe another fun alternative to doing a bird group as a, a future meeting because I could do that without a lot of preparation. I could just sit down and say, okay, let's go through eBird. Here's eBird 101. Um, maybe I'll do that in a, in a future week. And uh, certainly if that's something you're interested in looking at, uh, you could start just by going to eBird.org and look for the help information. They've got you know, very good information to show you how to take advantage of it. Um, and you can also use it without submitting your own information, which is you know, the other thing I do with eBird a lot. You can use it to see what has been seen in the area and where have they seen those things. And if you're you know, interested in making a big life list or making a big county year list, because that's a, a great tool that I can't imagine yeah. trying to do it without that. Um, OK, uh, so I'm going to go ahead then and, and wrap things up. Um, Thank you everybody very much. This was really cool. And I learned a lot about a lot of books that I will <laughs> rush out and buy. This will be bad for my, my bird book budget is gonna take a hit, I think after seeing all the, the recommendations. Um, but uh, we'll get back together. And again, next Thursday uh, will be Swallows or maybe we'll do eBird next Thursday and then we'll do Swallows the week after. I don't know. Uh, let's do a quick, a quick poll uh, so I can see Eight of you on screen right now, which I think is almost everybody who's here besides me. Uh, so if you would like to see uh, uh, eBird next week, wave your hand right now and we'll do eBird next week, eBird how to. Okay, if you would like to see swallows next, okay, I see one, I see two and then, and then swallows. Okay, now swallows, wave your hand if you want swallows. Okay, I think swallows win. So we'll do swallows next week and then I'll work on an eBird talk for the, the week after. And, and Mary Jo, I see you've got, you've got some really cool bird sculptures there. They're swallows. Oh, that's why, because they're swallows. Yeah. I'm reading your lips because you're, you're muted, but <laughs> what's that? Can you say it again? Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, you have Mother's My Day Mother's swallows. Day, yeah. Oh, very it's nice. Sculpture. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. My son's wonderful. Okay, well, uh, thank you, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and, and turn things off, but go out and see some birds. It's staying light, nice and late these days, so you can see birds well after the meeting is over. Uh, yeah. And I'll see you all next Thursday. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.